Here we go. Here we go. All right, guys. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Caliber Corner Season 5, Episode number 270. Just want to let everybody know we've already covered 270, the Caliber 270 on Caliber Corner. So there's already an episode devoted to it. So today is not going to be de devoted to that. I apologize. Uh, but we are going to talk about this interesting topic that uh, that Foos had suggested here. And it is, uh, what if uh, ammo and caliber research and development ended with World War II? What is the future of ammo? So, Foos, no, what was it that, that kind of got you thinking about this was, topic? What was it that inspired you? It wasn't just ammo. It was all military technology. Okay. So, like, no ARs, no AKs, um, stuff like that. Um, I, I just think... I, I think that war has become too much push button stuff, too much technology based and the honor in it. Like who's the best individual. I mean, it's still there, mm -hmm. but it became too much. Hey, here's the best individual with military power, like with air support, with all this other stuff. It kind of took the quote unquote romance out of warfare and it's just been something that's you know i've been thinking about pretty much my entire life being like man I, I wish that all this modern stuff just wouldn't be here life would be so much different maybe not simpler yeah but yeah it'd be different in good ways or would it, you know, would modern technology just take over and just utilize the existing calibers at the time? Like, like now we still have all these calibers around that we use from World War II, right. you know, 45 ACP, 308, hot six, right? right? Well, that, that, that's why I said, you know, it's, it's not a, you know, a caliber, it's all military technology. So you'd have very primitive jets, you'd have very prim primitive rocketry, you wouldn't have icbms you wouldn't have all this other stuff you wouldn't have yeah. technology you wouldn't i mean it's kind of like a whole like steampunk modern time that we'd be living in like you know you'd have this retro stuff going on but with like modern use and applications mm -hmm. yeah. all right real quick let's, let's go ahead and do the we'll, we'll do the introductions and get through everything and then we'll fire right into it okay all right so uh so real quick on my right we got single shot single shot how's your morning going dude you good Back in a second. All right, let's move on down to Squib Load. Squib, you all right, buddy? You good? You ready to roll? Oh, look at that. Look at that background. Look at you. you. Got a little mini caliber corner studio going on back there. All right. I like the OD green for all of drab. Good choice. Good choice. That That's actually John Deere green. Oh, no, that's way too dark. That's, OD that's green. a good song. That's right. John that's right. John Deere green. Nah, nah, nah. Who's saying that? That was Joe Diffie, wasn't it? Yes, right. it was. He, he, what do you say? He painted Billy Bob Love Charlene or something? Could have chose Absolutely. Red. That's right. The leather is three foot high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good song. That's a good song. But anyway, uh, Squib, go ahead and give us your little intro. What's going on? What's with this fancy background and we see you now? What Are you, are you growing up now? Are you evolving into the world of podcasting or what? Is that what's going on here? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So what's the name of your show? He finally Squib? became of age. Mm -hmm. So... I tossed around the idea of, of doing a regular live show years ago and then things changed and now things have changed back. So I, I, I'll eventually work into it. I think right now I might do a couple here or there, but nothing on a regular schedule. I don't want to do something on a regular schedule until I can find something I'm you more say able that to now, get to. But you'll, you'll be on a regular schedule. Well, no, I, when I find something. You will. Okay. Okay. Uh, right now, I don't know what kind of schedule I could commit okay. to. And I don't think it's, responsible of me to say i'm gonna do a regular weekly show and then i just show up when i feel like it okay. so right now i just want to show up when i feel like it but actually the name of the show was going to be i can't do the camera thing right i'm not doing the camera thing right? i can i'm just i gotta learn reverse angle in the green room with squib oh there yeah. you go there you so. go i like that i like that sounds good man it's gonna be a lot of fun Eh, and so I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I I should test out uh gun tube chamber, see how well that works. And I've already tried StreamYard and now I get to see what you guys see. So um yeah, it just I, I'd like to do a few maybe like fill in shows or yeah. something. Yeah. But I, I just 
it, when I get to some sort of, I've already got a set of ground rules for the, the show, which are ideas I had years ago when I was going to use this room for my studio. And uh, I've added some things to it since then. And I, I kind of like it because I've got all the power. I'll just kick all of you out and just in the uh, stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, that's good because Defense Dad's probably going to be your biggest uh, opponent here. It's too early in the morning to actually see Squib. So he gives you a one-star review. But, 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 tacos and french fries, Squib is going to go big time. See, there you go. He's got faith in you. That's a five-star review right there, man. I'm telling you. I'll, I'll be happy to let you down. <laughs> oh man, there are tacos and French fries is throwing the lyrics out there to John Deere Green. And then you got then you got Tony York saying that you think someone from Nebraska would know John Deere Green. I'm a trader, man. I'm Case IH all the way, baby. Let's do it. Go big red. Uh all right. Uh let's see. Single shot, are you back with us today? Yeah, sure I am. There Just you go. Back in the truck. How's your how's your morning going? How you doing? Why are you driving? You're supposed to be retired. I'd be on some beach somewhere if I were you, you know? <laughs> I'd be out in Key West, just enjoying life, just taking in some sun, you know, maybe hanging out at the Hemingway house, you know, going down to Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that'll that'll come in time. Okay, uh, okay. Because uh, I'm going to run until I, when I can't pass that DOT physical, that's when I'll retire, for sure. All right. 100%. Well, that, that's, a good, that's a good way to set it. It's like, okay, I'm, I've officially... I, I've expanded expanded my uh, my my driving skills, and it's good to it's good at that point. It'd be good to just turn the keys in and go home, right? Yes, sir. And, there you uh, go. Just you know, a, somebody's got to yep. be out here and mm -hmm. try to teach these young bucks some stuff. But absolutely, who knows? Hey, That's right. <laughs> I am my doubts on some of them, really. Oh, yeah. So, uh, hey, uh, yeah, you've got yeah, a presence yeah. over on Rumble. You've got a lot of cool reloading content that people will find yep. on your channel. Um, what is your channel called over on Rumble? Daywolf. Okay, D-A-Y-W-O-L-F. One word or yes, two uh, words? I already follow you over there. but No, one. One Just word. One okay, word. Daywolf. Capital and then B. Single, single space shot exclamation point if you're trying to find his channel on YouTube. On here, hey, hey YouTube, Squid, show man. your face. He is. I... He's right there. He's, he's cleanly shaven and everything today, so it's yeah. yeah. No, actually, I, I didn't really... shave because of food. Oh, oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I All recently right. got a strike uh, on YouTube again. Twitter. 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 What? 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 That she's not impressed. <laughs> so, single shot. What? What? What was the reason why you got the strike? What happened? <laughs> a casting video way back about a year and a half ago <laughs> how what how, under what premise i i just it, i don't understand under? these did, women i'm telling you did you did you happen to did you did you push a, a like a, a a vendor of products or something no. or put a link out there or something oh no nope. okay all right. Well, we'll see what uh, i'd escalate it and have them review it and find out specifically what it was you know, what yeah. exactly was the reason why. So, yeah, the YouTube CEO is going to be leaving. The Wajiki lady is going to be leaving. And they're bringing somebody else. Good. That's been, but, but they're bringing but somebody that else gonna, that's been there for eight that really years. Is that going to change anything? Um, Probably not. Because, I mean, the guy, well, the guy they're bringing in was their PR or marketing guy. Because YouTube's, their their ad revenue is down hardcore. My, my AdSense revenue was down 25% from last year, which I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's a fact. A lot of channels' revenue is down because ad revenue is down. So um, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because of the fact that they hadn't brought enough money in or enough advertisers in. I so they're going ad back revenue on their... could be down. They saturate the videos with ads. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if they have enough variety or they're not they're not able to demand That's the rates true. that they used to get before. Plus, it costs an insane amount of money to do what we're doing to host this, to store it. It's a never-ending expense. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's just I don't know if it's just for strictly marketing, which is the only reason why Google keeps keeps YouTube around anymore, or what it is. But yeah, I mean, well, hopefully he, does, he goes by logic and not by emotions. Well, I mean, judging by judging by how they how they rate our firearms videos, there's not exactly a lot of firearms knowledgeable staff that work at the YouTube office. Yeah. I'm just gonna say based off of what they what they complain about, what they don't let us do. So yeah. I'm just saying that I'm and that and that's just the nature of who they hire and their environment and who they're bringing in. You know, they're not going out there recruiting any of us to be their their firearms advisors, you know, at all, which would be the smart thing. And it's really sad. Squib would be awesome at that job. Who's that? Squib. 
Oh, well, there's a lot of us that could do the job, man. There's a lot of us that could that could definitely, you know, say what's safe and what's not safe and any. No, you guys, you guys would not like me if I was a CEO because everybody who hosts a live stream has to pay a monthly subscription, and if you make put so many videos on or so many minutes, you have to pay a monthly subscription. I'm not, you know, I, I'm I'm not into the censorship unless you're committing a crime, a legitimate crime live yeah, or in your, in your video but everybody no, but if you want if you want to post i'll say the word <laughs> content you're going to pay for it period whether you so, whether you get adsense revenue or you have a sponsor it doesn't matter so quick question like if it's <laughs> illegal in some areas like oh having an, an an ar a fully decked out ar is illegal in california would you restrict the views of Californians based off their IP? No, and I and would location? base it off of I would base it off your location. So if you're right. in a state where it's legal to no. smoke weed, right? You can smoke weed, even though it, there's all kinds of issues with that, you know, or legal to own an AR-15 or something. But if it, but even then, it would have to be something, and 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 those sorts of things. I don't think I would spend the money to go chase down that you were jaywalking or trespassing or uh put a 30 round mag when your state has 10 round i'm talking about committing a murder or an assault online or, or something like that yeah you know well, what I mean? yeah well, well, well there's what enough people breaking the law on youtube country videos anyway, like, you know what, what, what about when it comes to countries how like the the um Nazi is flag is not you can't show that in germany stuff like that <laughs> okay see that's the problem uh YouTube is an American company, so stuff like that. It's I would think, you know, okay, this is the way we do it here. If you don't like it, turn it off. Our we just, our we just right. well, off. you're going to make you're going to lose billions it. of yeah. dollars because you cut off the Germans. Well, you know, I don't know. That's capitalism. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if it if it was a foreign com com country or company and they had their rules because that's the way they do things there, and we're using their service, we probably wouldn't like it. American ingenuity would say, let's make our own. I'm, that's the way it used to work. We, but, we, yeah. we, we have not made yeah. a uh, we have not made a competitor to TikTok yet. So uh, we're trying YouTube, to with YouTube yeah. shorts, but YouTube, I, don't know I think YouTube's gonna, gonna YouTube is pushing the shorts. They're gonna buy TikTok, and then they're just gonna change shorts to TikTok, or they're gonna change TikTok to shorts, and then they're gonna have a monopoly. Hey, uh, Foos, why don't you go and give us your introduction real quick here, and we'll go ahead and I got some announcements to make this morning, and then we got to get through the. The welcome list here. So, Foos, how are you doing today? You good? I, I, I'm good. My name is Foos Knuckles. Um, I am not Squib. There, there you go. <laughs> I'm not Squib. <laughs> you look nothing like him. Although I have this habit of confusing Foos and Squib, especially when I get mad at one or the other. I'm always like yelling at one of them. And it's like, it's not me. I'm not doing anything. And it's always, it's like a guy that's got two kids and he always mixes up his two children or he, when he yells at him, you know? Yeah, That's what my grandma does to me and my my cousin. And yeah. the, the girlfriend now does not like you because she uh, she uh... you called her by her ass. Hey, <laughs> not Jill. Whatever. Because I said that. <laughs> hey, uh, okay. Also joining us, we got yeah. Hillbilly up and an American Hillbilly. How you doing, man? You good? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. I'm doing great. Sorry there for being good. late. No, it's all good, man. How's your morning going? Are you all right? You good? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Cool, cool, cool. You excited for today's topic? How, how do you feel about, uh, you know, guns and ammo, R&D, technology, ending with World War II, and we'd be living in the stuff that our, our grandpappies were driving around in and shooting and stuff? Would you be okay with that? Uh, the old cars, I wouldn't mind as much, but yeah. the guns, I think I'd rather keep oh. what we got right now. Oh, you, know? you don't you, you don't want to lug around a nice heavy M1 uh, Garand to no, go, no. Uh, you know? No, think about this. <laughs> no, could, it, 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 M1 carbine, a 30 mag M1 carbine, that won't all drop decked anything. out in tactical stuff. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So real quick, let's give a shout out on the YouTube side. Let's see who's uh, watching here. And then we're going to uh, go ahead. So Tony York, again, he's Mike, Mike Trop comment of the morning. 30 out six was the pinnacle. I don't disagree with you. I mean, that's the one of the be it all end it all best rounds ever made. But uh, Tony York's joining us. Eight R4 thousand. Mississippi Thunder, New York Outcast. Um, let's see. Uh, Freda is out there. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Freda. Uh, 500 Magnums out there. Squib load watching today over there and over here we got the whole squib empire joining in we got defense dad out there trying to wake up we've got tactical fud in the house i think i saw bjorn earlier possibly bill beam is out there tacos and french fries is joining us 
500 Magnums watching today. Woods is out there. Patriot in the dark joining in. Fluffy 10 millimeter Jeep guys watching. Thomas Rees is out there also. Good to see you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. And that Mountain View's out there today too. So lots of good stuff. Uh, a couple announcements to make. First of all, I will be doing my Patreon drawing. Uh, either I, I've got a couple days off from work here, so I'll be doing that in the next couple days. I've got a very cool gift I'm going to be giving away for Patreon patrons, which is really cool. I'm going to give away an optic. And uh, <laughs> not Squib is joining us, aka Foos. Um, also, let's see what else. Thunder on the Prairie is going to be happening in June. We do have some sponsors on board for it. We are working with Monster Tactical and Versicary, uh Blackout Coffee Companies on board. Cleanse Oils on board. Thunder on the Prairie. Uh, Thunder on the Prairie 2023. Uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And then also Bear Creek Arsenal. I'll be hearing from them soon, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to work with us too. I'm working with one of their uh, one of their one of their, their doctors that sends products out to people that have YouTube channels. What? I'll be featuring. Go ahead. What's up? Oh no. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So that's going to happen. And if you again, we're gonna. I don't know what if we're gonna limit the numbers or not. But um, if you want to attend the event, you'll be heading over to NebraskaShooters.com, and you can check out the date for that. I'm not sure if the bookings are up yet. It should be coming up soon. And it's going to be a two day event, 25 bucks per day. The first day is going to be range day. Um, will be limited for filming. And then the second day is going to be uh, filming on the range, giving you a space, a chance to walk around. You know, you can actually be in front of your own firing line because you'll have your own zone that's going to be secluded. Give people a chance to maybe film on a range, which they really can't do sometimes uh, just because of where they are. or can't film easily because of noise and stuff like that. So it's going to be a fun time. Gets all of us together. People travel from all around the country and uh, just have a good time. We're also going to talk to, uh, to Meet Ammo and hopefully we can get them on board also. And provide us with some of that sweet, sweet frangible ammo that we shot last year that ran like a champ, that ran great. Um, so hopefully that's going to happen too. Um, also, we'll be deciding on Defense Dad and I have decided on a winner for the uh, Thunder on the Prairie logo. We'll go live and show off that logo. And then what I think we're going to do is we're going to take the logo and post that on our channels for our, our Teespring and Spreadshirt shops. So those designs will be available. If you want a, a t-shirt, you can get one. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the way I price those shirts, I make a dollar off every t-shirt that I sell. That's it. So some of these YouTube channels that'll go 30 or $35 per shirt, they're making 10 to $15 per shirt. I keep it at the minimum that I can make that I can sell the shirt for short of breaking even. You so I make one buck. Here, geez. I make one buck off that before taxes. So after taxes and after spread shirts, kind of think I make like 50 cents if I'm lucky, 40 cents. So if the shirts are 25 bucks, that's just the reality of outsourcing your t-shirt printing to somebody else. And it isn't much cheaper for me to get it done locally. So now, here's the thing. All There were four designs that were submitted. They're all going to be winners. They're all going to get something. And then we'll have like a, a grand prize for the main winner that's going to get something. So we're going to make that happen too. Heck, I might just take that. I might just take that optic and maybe make that the thing that I give away to the to the winner. I don't know. We'll see. Otherwise, we got some cool prizes lined up for everybody. And then we'll have that design available. You can buy it on whatever Teespring puts it on, which is like anything, you know, T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, and stuff like that. So that'll be, you can get whatever you want. So that's going to happen here soon. Um... Otherwise, I think that's about it. Oh, we are going to just a little, since you guys are watching, um, I'm going to be doing an unboxing very soon of the Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol with a tire stripe finish. I managed to score one. I had about 30 minutes to buy it after I got the email before they sold out. There's a limited run of that particular finish. They're also available in black and gray and OD green. So that's going to be showing up on the channel. I'll do a cleaning video for it. We'll take it out and shoot it. And what actually has me even more excited is I will be picking up very soon a High Point JXP10, 10 millimeter. I know there's a lot of channels that are already starting to feature it, but to get one is actually not that easy. So I got an I got a, an email notification from Sportsman's Warehouse located in Grand Island, Nebraska, that they got them in stock. And so I went ahead and bought one right away. I think out the door, it was like $215. I've already got ammo for it. So we'll do a cleaning video for that. We'll take it to the range. We'll do an unboxing. We'll have some fun with it. I'll take it out to Thunder on the Prairie so you guys can play around with it if you want to have some fun with it. Because, I mean, a lot of people want them, so they're going to be a little hard to find initially. And then probably by the summer, you'll be able to order them and not have issues finding them. So pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty pumped up for that. So uh, can we get hats at Travis P11? I whatever T whatever Teespring puts my design on. If you go to my channel, watch a video, you click on the T-shirts below it. It'll open up the whole catalog of availability. It's whatever they have available, and then also Spreadshirt.com. So I'll have the designs put over on both places, and then you guys can get them on whatever you want to. Baby onesies, you know, whatever. Uh, dish towels, you know. So we, we, yeah. we, we're, we're going to have to do a comparison. Uh, JM uh, JXP10 versus your. I, I, I'll bring my shoddy out. 
There you go. The the yeah, the JM Mossberg 930 versus the, yeah. the Breda A300. Which mm -hmm. I mean, that's that yeah, that A300. It's you got your um, it's got it does have removable choke tubes with it. It's got seven plus one capacity. I wanted a Benelli M4, but I didn't want to drop two grand. I wasn't, I didn't like the bread A A1301. It was just a little odd feeling in my hands, and that was yep. fifteen hundred. So. Mine, I think, is eight plus one. Okay, with choke tubes. Okay, okay. So yeah, yeah. no, those are. And I thought about a nine thirty or nine forty, like the new one they just came out with. Mm -hmm. um, well, this one being out, I love the Tiger Stripe finish. I was totally a sucker for that finish on it. It's got the pick rail on the top. It does have an optics cut on it also, which is, or it's got the pick rail on the top and it's got the rear ghost ring sight. So we'll be bringing that to you guys. Um, the manual does recommend you clean it before you take it out. So I'm not going to just take it out of the box and shoot it. They say in the manual, you will get manufacturing oil all over the inside of the gun if you shoot it before you clean it. So it um, is going to get cleaned. Yeah, I'm going to properly clean it. Yeah. Oh, for, for that, um, as long as my suppressor comes in, I should be able to bring out my... 308 sorry my bolt gun uh okay. because i was able to find 225 grain projectiles Ooh. and i had some powder that will work subsonic so if i if i get my suppressor out i'll have uh um, almost 100 rounds of 308 subsonic and you know what i'll bring out my ruger ranch rifle and we can we can play with that because I think if the thread pitch is the same, we can screw it on my ranch rifle and you can. Uh, it uh, mine, it's it has the it has to go onto a certain muzzle device, I think. Oh, okay. I'll have to okay. look to see if it comes right. with both adapters. If it okay. does, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, because I I do have a threaded barrel on that, and I've never fired the uh, the Ruger Ranch in seven sixty two by thirty nine suppressed. It's thirty caliber, so this, the, uh, this press would work with it. But it's it's oh, it's three eleven. I I. Mm, Oh, it's, you couldn't use that with a 308 suppressor? I, I, I don't know. I'll have to look. Okay, okay. No, I, I figured you probably could since it was 30 cal across the board. It wouldn't matter, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, it doesn't matter. All right, man. So, yeah, we got everybody here. So, let, let's go ahead and get into this topic now. So, so um, Foose, I do want to just focus on the, the ammo side of it because the ammo side okay. of it would have a huge impact on the guns that we would own today, mm -hmm. the way the militaries are outfitted. And a lot of us are you know, oh. army surplus firearms owners. And I could imagine taking something like my Mosin into battle. Now, if your life depended on it, it's not going to matter at that point, but just like as an everyday combat <sighs> rifle, like an M1 so, Grand or an M whatever, an M1A no, or an M1 no, so, Yeah. So let's, we can even go kick this up one more. It's if there is an experimental um, round well, no, no, let's not even do that. Let's just go with, you know, end of World War One. 1945 so and before is all you can have for... for, for so, so, for so you have not 45 and 9. Uh -huh. no, you know, you, you have... Yeah. Would all we have 9mm? Would we really have 9mm in the U.S.? 9mm Luger in the yeah, U.S.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because we, 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 oh, we, we I thought 45 ACP would have been the primary handgun yeah. round we would have carried. Um, but, but you wouldn't have, like, today's tech, uh, bullet technology. You would just have... Today's gun manufacturing technology. So, would things really look yeah, different? Yeah, so guns would actually be built better. <laughs> yeah, would they though? Because I mean, they're using that we can buy all that ammo today, and you know they can handle modern hunting ammunition, mm -hmm. which sometimes has higher pressure specs on it. So, I don't know. Do you think that guns would would we have like? I don't know. It's just kind of hard to think about. So, like, what so would it do? You know, th th yeah. think about this instead of an AR with a uh, like because it, it needs to be a fairly straight walled case for your ARs because of the how high it needs to go from the mag to the chamber that'd be in probably 30 carbine instead of 223 or it'd be in uh 8 millimeter kurtz or I'm mean, like all your AKs would probably be in 8 millimeter kurtz we wouldn't even have AKs would we well, if, well, if, no, we, if we, we said we could, we could just, if the guns if the guns were built, but the calibers were different. Right. We had the guns that we have now, but you were limited to World War II and before calibers. Yes. What so, would we so have? Okay. That, 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 that's right. what my thought was: was all military technology, like gun advancement and everything, would have ended at World War One, uh, World War Two. You limiting it just to calibers, all the same stuff is going to probably be out there just in different calibers, like a, a lot of your semi-auto. Battle rifles would probably be in seven millimeter Mauser instead of 308, which would be fabulous, or even 6.5 Swede. I mean, how awesome would that be 
to I have putting a bug in the ear of gun makers. They're going to start making guns in all these calibers. Watch, we'll have a, <laughs> no, we'll have no, a 30, no, 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 we'll, we'll have a 30 carbine AR next year that'll feature, and everybody's going to go 30 carbine nuts, you know, because right now they're, they're marketing everything they possibly can because all yeah. these ideas have already been used. That's why we're getting yeah. like five, seven handguns. I'm not saying they're mm -hmm. pointless, but I'm just saying that there's stuff that they're making, mm -hmm. like tactical, you know, uh, lever guns, you know. Right. It's just, it's another way. It's just another thing to sell because while well, the market is so saturated with what's available, or like I said last week, you know, we're going to have modern creations of of, of mill surf guns mm -hmm. because that's and we've said before, you know, that why aren't they doing this? I would go back and buy one of these if they made it, and they can't. Mm -hmm. And the ammo is there, so you know why wouldn't they just go make those things again and market them to us? So, I mean, I could see us but, having but, these, but, but, you know. because the return on investment's not there. Yeah, you, there may be. For every one of you, there's 150 other people that will, will look at that and go, yeah, I'm not going to waste my money. So. Also, you've got the marketing guys that are like, hey, I've got an idea. Let's make a 100% compatible reproduction M1 Garand, and let's charge more than an authentic M1 Garand. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here, let's move over to this, and we'll come back to the idea yeah. of, the, of the combat. We'll talk about like army loadouts, like what would it look like today, but um woods is asking a question how would shotguns be affected uh what would uh ammo what ammo choices would, would would not be there what would we not have there wouldn't be like, dragon's we, breath no do we have right. tungsten and all that other stuff back then and shot shells in the 1940s no no we, steel and lead it, it is that be, it? It, it and slugs it, it, do we even have slugs back then i'm sure we, we did we, we didn't have shotgun. we didn't have steel back then we didn't have steel shot back then it there was, was no just steel, all no steel shot in, in pre-19 or 1945 or sooner i i straight I, up I, lead I I think it would just be lead, and then you had we we had, did have buckshot, but I don't think we'd have. I don't know. Yeah. Um, slugs might have been around, but that's it. I mean, but four ten would that be around? Oh, I'm I'm thinking that would probably be around. Um, but you know, your forty, your ten mil probably wouldn't be there. All of your when it comes to long range rifle, you're going to be looking at. You know, in your oh, military six. caliber, six, six yeah. five Swede, um, seven Mauser, eight Mauser, thirty odd six. You're not going to have any of this three three eight. But guess no what? Six five Creed more. <laughs> but guess what? You yeah. still have a fifty BMG. Okay. So, but you now, wouldn't have what, the bullet technology. That, that's what about what about okay? Let's, let's ends, talk about okay. Bullet technology ends. Mm -hmm. So that means all all of your high BC. Bullets wouldn't be around. Um, Tom Reese, Thomas Reese says um, Elmer Keith would have to never have been born to prevent new calibers from being made. He made folks mm -hmm. think outside the box when he came to yeah. ammo. True. Um, so, so back to this: if if you had just a nine, let's say pistol, you had nine millimeter and forty five with nineteen late, you know, mid nineteen forties technology. Would you carry the forty-five or the nine? Because of the bullet, because you know, right now everyone's shooting nine because with today's technology, the the wound cavity between a forty-five and nine is virtually identical. Back then, it's not. That's a good what question. I mean, because you know, but we would, but well, let's just say now we would have. Let's just pretend we had Glocks, we had Berettas now. We, you know, we we nothing would have those guns would have still been made. We still have M and P's. We'd still have XDs because they'd mm -hmm. either be chambered in forty five or nine or what twenty two LR. We would have had that in handguns back back thirty, in the day too. Three eighty. We'd have we would have we would have, we would have three fifty seven and forty. Not what? Yeah, would we have forty four no. mag? Yeah, we'd have three fifty seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Forty four mag. You, okay. you have seven six two toker red. Would that? Oh would yeah. That pick up. Yeah. Um. What would? Uh, uh, let's see, nine Mac would not be around. Bjorn says seven sixty two by fifty four R. That's another solid round, man. I mean, that's, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Being, guns are still yep. being for that caliber. That's the but, oldest. Um, that's one of the oldest continuously produced is, cartridges, right? Of I mean, eighteen ninety one or something. So, so uh, yeah. that well, no, there, there's older ones that are still produced, but that is the oldest military Rimmed? cartridge oh. still around, okay. that's still in use. But with that. You know, all your same guns would still be in that because of that rim. But if you take that rim away, what else could it be in? You know, it, there'd be a lot more semi-auto stuff with that. There'd be a lot more bolt stuff with that if that rim was gone. Yeah. But, I mean, 
I mean, you, you kind of look at that as um, an example of what would happen if military, if small arms military technology would have ended yeah. um, when we came to rounds. Um, Hillbilly, you want to chime in on this one? You, you make a pretty good point, too. There would have been a lot of solid offerings out there, STG-44, um, Hillbilly MP-40 machine pistol. Well, and on. But, but, but is the STG-44 really a solid option? Um, because it, it was slapped together. The ones that have survived and get shot are clapped out i mean like well just the, the but, fact that a lot of the guns we have now would not be available now they would not have been they wouldn't have been developed and everybody came to be well, so okay. i think you might have had more production of those eras firearms for consumers because we don't well, have the branch off that we do now so of all so, these other so, guns yeah so 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 that that's what that's what i'm thinking if you say it's only military rounds technology ended versus all you know military and firearm technology yeah, you'd have not, all the same guns, just rechambered. Yeah. So you'd have you still have all the ARs. It'd be in different stuff. Well, th think about this: Nine have, a, have an AR-10 yeah. in seven millimeter or six five Swede. Yeah. How cool would that be? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, I'm surprised nobody's making it yet. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then if that's if it's let's say it's in seven Mauser, you shorten that up. Would it be in 30 carbine? Would it be in uh, eight Kurtz? Yeah, that's a possibility. Man. Kind of exciting to think about all these guns we don't have now yeah. because of the fact that technology yeah. is marked on and left all these other calibers behind, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, he'll but, really have uh, what's your take on this, man? What do you think? All those cartridges are interchangeable, or, or be, the brass can be remade into different calibers. But the thing is, you got to consider is that head speed. Uh, size, you know, most of the calibers back then is three thirty odd six, three oh eight, etc. They got that four seventy three diameter head, so you got to match that to the bolt mm -hmm. to uh, change it to another caliber. Yeah, so so that that's why I said that. What well, the like the M four that uh, the M sixteen style, if you if it went uh, nine Kurtz, you'd have a giant basically three oh eight bolt head in it because yeah. that the that the eight curse is built off the eight mauser which shares the heads the bolt with um a 308 so yeah. and seven mauser and all the and 30 out six all stuff so would your ar-15 be bigger or would they rechamber it and have that set up for a 30 carbine which is smaller uh, but, size but down. yeah, but but the thing is, you can't size it down because military technology and like the swaging, you know, you know, no new calibers since post World War II. So you wouldn't have all these ankles or all these um, uh, one offs out there. You wouldn't have 300 blackout. You wouldn't have 556. Five, you wouldn't have 308 or any derivative off of 308. No right. 250 you'd have all this stuff that wouldn't be around. But with the way Travis is saying it, firearm technology would keep on going. What guns would be chambered differently? Like what the G3, would that would that be a viable gun with a 30 odd six? Or would it would that go to a seven Mauser? Or yeah, because you, you six have companies three, making one line of rifles but multiple caliber, multiple chamberings, you know. Well, or you know, like like a G three, because right now it, it's in a th uh, three hundred eight. If they wanted to make the same action, they'd have to go down to six five Swede because seven millimeter Mauser, eight Mauser, and thirty out six is all too long. And I don't think it would work with that. I think there'd be too much, uh, too much force. But we would still have modern production rifles like our yeah. Ruger American Ranch chambered in seven sixty two by fifty four R or you know six five Swede and all yeah, these other yes. calibers. You know, yeah. yeah. Like, like, what what would firearms be different now? Because, I mean, you, you did change my original thought, which is fine. Yeah, but, I just wanted to focus on the ammo part of it because right. that would influence the guns that we could buy, too, you know? No, yeah. no, no. I, I don't think it would influence... It, it might influence the guns we buy because without modern cartridges, these guns may not work correctly. Like, like again, the AR. 
would it run and do its purpose with a 30 carbine the way the military wanted it to work? Probably not. We probably wouldn't even have the AR. Now we'd have 270, but we'd have no 243. I'm looking up the origin dates mm -hmm. of these ammo of this ammo. It's like, oh man, that's so that would be around. Some of these calibers that you love would be around, but there'd be mm -hmm. no five five six. Uh what about seven sixty two by thirty nine? When was that originated? Was that, uh, that, so, that so so the SKS came into late uh or, or sorry, uh, early forty five. So you technically you could would have the by thirty nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and if that's the case, you still have AK. And would the AR be developed in that round? Oh, that's a good thought. Or would we have, well, yeah, we, we, let's just pretend we couldn't invent any more ammo after 45. So, it, so yeah, mm -hmm. it would have to be something that would have been existing at the time. So, so, I, so I, I think I, I think I found an answer, but it, again, it would have, it would go against the whole topic for today. I'll show you something here in a little bit here, but yeah, go ahead, Coos. So, like, if it would, you know, let's say, you know, by 39, would Gene Stoner even make it in that because the military is wanting something fast and smaller round, be able to carry more. And they already knew about the by 39 at that point. You know, let's say the AR-10 would be a seven Mauser or a 6.5 Swede or something like that. Would they just stick with that because a 6.5 Swede is a small round moving fast? Or, I mean, yeah. what, what, would the M16 even be developed? Would the would the AR-10 make that, uh, that uh, evolutionary jump into a downsizing? Would we just adopted an FAL? <laughs> yeah. Or well, like no, G3 or set me, or you know. Okay. Well, FALs. What would yeah. that be? Well, what would that be? Caliber uh, chambered in because all those are 308. Would it be six, again six five Swede. Would it be seven Mauser, eight Mauser, yeah. thirty yeah. odd six? Like, you know. Do we go back to uh, another BAR derivative? Um, Probably. We would have just used what's available. So real quick, let's let Hillbilly up, get his uh, yeah. get his point out to us. So go ahead, Hillbilly. So what, what are your thoughts on this whole idea? Would you – I mean, go ahead, man. Let it go. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, really. Um, it'd, totally, it'd be different, that's for sure. We'd still have our high point, though. We'd have our high point carbine. We'd have our high points. Yeah. We'd have our 9 millimeters and our 45s and – Mm -hmm. uh let's see i don't know when did 380 come out um not for sure on that we'll, we can see that one so, so, so early, 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 early 20th century okay yeah 380 before world war ii let me let me show you guys something here real quick that okay so again we're talking about you know ammo development ending have you guys ever heard of this one before this this article goes back to 2011 all right this is probably where the ar would be if 30 remington ar are you guys ever heard of that one no no. 30 Remington yep. AR. This is the, the caliber of the time for God, essentially. 125 grain core locked. Uh, let's see, soft points. Remington's new 30 AR cartridge is the same length as 223 and functions through the company's standard R15. It's version of the AR15. So there you go. That might be the one to get yep. right there. That's probably where we would have gone. But was that round? It, it wasn't. It, it it could have like yeah had there been any development yeah no because this this is just hypothetically speaking I wanted to just show it off as something weird I've never ever seen before so because okay. I was looking to see if there's any modern production 30 cal AR15s out there because it doesn't it you know they can modify the bolt and the chassis to to chamber whatever it needs to it might be mm -hmm. somewhat compatible with the AR platform but not 100 yeah. percent you know if they're making yeah. a different caliber but 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 that, that that's my question would the AR be a thing? It without the round i think we would have just gone to like ar 10s or you know fals or g3s at, mm -hmm. or our own version of it we would have had some sort of like 308 based rifle or would we okay. just be rocking grands you know uh, well in 14s but in a 30 in a, in a 30 uh 30 out six yeah um like what, what other stuff would not would not be made like all, all your bullpup stuff Probably not because that all of a sudden you're getting to a, a throw that's pretty long. Well, there's there's a oh, I gotta think here. Well, What's the biggest caliber that you can get for a bullpup? I know they do 300 blackout, but is there is there are there any 308 bullpups that are out there at all or not? I, I, there, I have seen some 308s. Is there a but, war in 308 yeah. or not? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but okay. still, even a 308, like. 
that that's still a you know yeah it's a full power but if you look back at world war ii all of their cases are longer than 308 so you'd have even more throw so you saw probably have another inch throw on that and then all suddenly you move everything for an inch you might not have bull pups Chris in the 740. Uh, I killed two hogs in South Carolina with 30 Remington AR. It was my guide's gun. So I, I wonder if that caliber is going to just be reintroduced just because it's already there and nobody's marketing it yet. I, I mean, mean 30, 30 Remington could be the new thing now. You the, know? The, yeah. the M1 carbine, you know, uh, 30. Uh, my dad has one. I shoot it, shot it a bunch in my lifetime. It's a good gun. Yeah. And 9 millimeter, but... Um, so we said research and development or whatever um, would back then. I mean, the citizens could design their own guns or whatever. I mean, I don't know. If, would that be against the law? Because without the gun manufacturers, you know, and stuff like that, would citizens like be the one to step up? And well, let's make, not pretend that there were. Let's just pretend that we had the same freedoms we have today. You'd still have 80 mm -hmm. percent builds. You'd still yeah. have. 80% lowers. You can still make your own guns legally if you wanted to, you know? So so, so for, for today's conversation, it is small arms technology would have advanced, but not cartridge technology. Yeah. Yeah, so what would that look like? To, I mean, Back the thing then. is, it might not look very different because a lot of what we shoot today is, is well, still based off of what we shot 100 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but solution didn't happen, so you wouldn't have... Like you wouldn't have all the different projectiles in nine millimeter. You'd basically have no. ball. Um, ball. Yeah. Like you wouldn't have the three hundred eight. Like what? What would be your replacement for that? All of your uh, like super long range stuff isn't there. I mean, that'd probably be all six five Swede. Um, like, would the Carcano ammo, the six five Carcano, be a good thing? Because I mean, that's. That's your sh shortest cartridge. You know, 300 yards in works. Like, that may be the quote-unquote hotness or, you know, a derivative of that because they still had Spitzer rounds. They could have done all that. And it, no. I mean, it's that, – that, that, that'd be interesting to know what our modern firearms would look like with – Boom. basically end of world war two ammunition yeah and another thing you have to consider too along those lines of being back in that time you got to consider uh forming to the geneva convention mm -hmm. that controlled a lot of that stuff we had, we had hollow point ammo. Hollow point ammo would have been yeah. around. I think it was invented in the late 1800s or something. So there yeah. would be the possibility for hollow point ammo. Right, that, right. You know, but could people right. use it? Right, right. But but all the spun copper projectiles and all this other stuff wouldn't be around. Mm -hmm. Um, like six five sweet, I think would be your long range, potent round. Um. Besides, you know, fifty cal, uh, like how much more, how much more stuff would be in three hundred three? Tony York says they were shooting one thousand yards of forty five seventy. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. maybe we would be okay with what would have been available, what what would be available oh, at the time, you know? We, we, absolutely, we, we would be okay one hundred percent. It's just how would stuff be different? I don't like, think it would be. Well, I mean, other than having modern rifles chambered in. Some of these, you know, World War II era cartridges, that, well, that would be the big difference is we would have guns still like now in production with without we'd be missing anything made after 45. So I think you would still have a pretty good variety of guns out there. Right. Well, um, no, so so without the the newer calibers, I'm thinking there will be some guns what kind of like the AR 15. It I don't think that would get produced or get um the research and development without the two, two, three round. Yeah. It might have yeah, stopped it AR it and yeah. just been done with it. Like, and then all that, you have all those other derivatives. Um, I, I know all the PCCs you'd still have. Well, Tony I says, don't know. Tony says 300 Savage would do. 
300 Savage would do in place of 308? Was 300 yep. Savage out back in the 40s? Yep. It was. And the thing is, think about all these calibers that we're not thinking of. The time is forgotten. Here where there's 30 Remington, I didn't even know that ever existed, you know, that which was introduced in 08, 2008. Um, yeah. you know, that, that 30 AR 30, whatever that, whatever they call it. I mean, I mean, all these calibers that would have been out there at the time that, you know, well, people are still kind of keeping alive, doing their own hand loads for and stuff, well, but they're and, just gone. And if you want to really think about it, instead of the 308, um, seven, five Swiss, which is eerily similar to the 308. If you hold them side by side, it's, it's kind of hard to, uh, figure out which one's which. Because both 308... Uh, 75 Swiss is a pretty good-sized cartridge. Sorry. No, no, I, I, I didn't... If I said Swiss, I'm uh, apologizing. I meant 75 French. Yes, now you're now you're now, talking. The those quotes. are the same. So 75 French might have been the cartridge for the foul and everything else. That so might have been the AR-10. What what would the what would the modern U.S. Army soldier be? Uh, what would his loadout be? What would his combat rifle be? Well, you have to remember back then. It, not somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I was reading or whatever um, when Winchester at that time come out with the Model Twelve, you know, pump shotgun. Um, it was literally some people said it was an un. Of the other people were fighting, so it was unfair oh, gun because yeah, it the gave trench such an advantage. Yeah, because you could hold the yeah. trigger down and pump it and fire. Yeah, and plus yeah. out of the trench and all that. So. But we said they, they were using flamethrowers and gas, so you know that was fair too. So yeah, yeah, that's not cruel and unusual on the battlefield. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, I went so, just a model we never ever we never, we never adopted any of those cords technically, right? Like we never did. We not actually sign off on the Geneva Convention we, with ammo US and stuff. <laughs> U.S. never did. Um, yeah. So going back, I, I think your 308 would be 75 French. I, I, I think that would, I mean, because if, if you look at it, look, look, look at everything, it's basically a 308. What's the advantage of that over 308 then? Um, well, I mean, we, we, in this scenario, we, we wouldn't have 308. No, 308 didn't come around until after. The 308 did not come until the uh, 50s. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. I got a 4956. Yeah. I got a 4956, and that thing is extremely accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. French 4956, yeah. Um, I I have a Moss 36. Um, It's, yeah, that that round is, is virtually identical. Um, yep. and everything. It, it, it shot a, you know, 130 grain, around 139 grain instead of 149 grain. 139, yeah. Um, and like the shoulder's a bit different, but yep. you're still spitting a 139 grain pill at 26, 2700 feet per second. So, so it's yeah, we could have 300 Savage though. 300 Savage would have been around, so we could, we could have used that mm-hmm. in like an AR-10 platform essentially. But would the jump make from AR ten to AR fifteen? Would would that have happened? I don't. know. We'd have to have something to shoot through it. So that's just it. We would have. We maybe we'd have something that looks like an AR but shoots like thirty carbine or you know. Uh, but, Squib, Squib, question for you. Are you back? Uh, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, question for you, Squib. What would the modern Marine? have today if they were limited to guns and ammo well not guns but but ammo limited to the end of world war ii and before what would the marine carry for a battle rifle what would the marine carry for a sidearm what do you think would there be any what 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 are your thoughts i don't i don't really have any (laughs) well we're sitting here saying you know 300 savage or we were saying what seven five french is that a rifle chambered in that five french yep Okay. Okay. But let's just pretend that the, you know, the gun development had continued on. So we'd have guns we'd buy now, but they would have been chambered for those calibers. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'd have less uh, semi-auto options and stuff than we do now uh, in terms of rifles? Well, yeah, I, I, I think yes, because I don't think the jump down to the AR-15 would make it. And then think of all the derivatives we have that off the AR platform that is basically two-thirds of our firearms today 
the only reason yeah. the rifles. P- pistol yeah. development would have would have been the same. It's just limited. We'd have limited calibers and ammo, basically, versus what we yeah. have now. Yeah. It, but, but it come comes down to the rifles. So now, no now, five now, seven, no five seven out there for people. <laughs> no, no five seven. Darn it. No, like you'd have you still have eight Kurtz and seven six two by thirty nine. Um, so yeah, you, the AK would still be a thing. Um, would we? Would they then? Like, what other guns would be in seven six two by thirty nine? Like that, that'd probably be the cartridge or eight millimeter Kurtz would be the cartridge of your, your interme- intermediate. Or would a thirty carbine still be a thing? Because if you look at the um, power and ballistics of thirty carbine versus those two, it, they're virtually identical. Hmm. This is an interesting little prospect. Yeah. What's going on? I'm looking at Outcast comment over there. Uh, Tony York says that Marines would carry a 1911 and a K bar. That's pretty much all you need. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, also, what about like 45 ACP? Would we have more PCCs and 45 ACP since we already would have had the, the Tommy mm-hmm. gun at that time? No, I, I, I think that would have went to nine just because of the weight of ammo and a PCC. But to me, it's like us adopting, you know, Axis calibers. I just couldn't see America doing that because that wouldn't be the American way. But I don't know. It's just, or you say, you know, shooting like seven five, you know. But we couldn't develop anything else. We can only use what's already out there. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we would take seven five French instead of the three hundred eight. Uh, if an AR fifteen came, it'd probably be in thirty carbine at first. But yeah, th- then we'd be able. It would go to. Just like now, it'd be you know we'd have uh, seven six two by thirty nine. We'd have nine Kurtz. We'd have all that stuff if the AR fifteen was created. Um, I gotta agree with Tony York there. He goes, "We don't do millimeter crap." I'm the worst person when it comes to the metric system, and mm-hmm. the sad part is the only reason why I have any kind of understanding of the metric system is from like watching foreign car racing watching the kilometers and showing these speed equivalent and mm-hmm. then also with liquids like knowing a liter of soda you know versus a quart versus a pint so i don't i'm horrible with metric i understand 3.8 liters is a gallon mm-hmm. like i have to visualize metric to understand it which is kind of crazy because yeah. you know i have to if you say hey this well this weighs three and a half kilograms I, I don't know what that that I have no idea what the equivalent of that would be in pounds because I didn't grow up with metric system. So right. I, I gotta agree with Tony on that one. We're all about the inches. The <laughs> United States military was using metric ammunition before before the turn of the 20th century. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, he's got a good point though. Uh Shuda says that the eight millimeter Kurtz is 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 oils have been changed because it's inherently flawed and in feeding more than 22 to 24 rounds, no matter the mag shape. Every STG I fire needed to be download it to be reliable okay. oh you need, to, you need to carry less in the capacity in the magazine because of the yeah because of the curve on it so but but magazines could also evolve too like magazine technology could become modern you know that and, that we're saying that that hasn't changed spring, and, yeah and springs yeah. would become modern yeah um, yeah so so i don't think feeding would be an issue that would have been overcame um do you guys think that guns would be better per se, maybe more reliable or just better built because the fact we'd have less, somewhat less selection, there'd be less R and D going yeah. into guns that we would never have access to. No, no, no. I mean, so, uh, the biggest question is, would a gun be uh, um, even R and D like, Oh, that's, that's nothing. That's not going to happen because like, it, it, I think it, it all goes back to the AR. Um, AR-10 to AR-15 making that jump. If the military wanted a small, small, fast caliber to hold a bunch of ammo, and the two-two-three was not there, what would it be? Would it be the six-five Swede? Would it be two seventy Roberts? Like it would have to. At that point, it would still have to be a full-size cartridge with a small uh, diameter round. So what about your average gun owner? What would our personal defense scenarios look like just as, as concealed carriers if we were limited to what? Well, we could say all point ammo, but I mean, I don't even know if it was commercially available in the 40s. I, I know it, was, it existed, but I don't know if it was ever actually out there, you know, I mean, wherever he's carrying FMJs, you know. 
what, 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 at that point, we'd probably have um, FMJ with a hole drilled in the end of it. Um, because we didn't, we didn't have all the technology and moving. Yeah, okay. So it says first hollow point bullets, bullets were marketed in the late 19th century as express bullets, and they were hollowed out to reduce the bullets mass and provide higher velocity. So it wasn't even really about expansion back then either, you know, because they wouldn't have it, the abilities to like with the materials and, and the metals and so on to develop those cartridges to expand the way that they do. Correct. See, maybe the engineering was there. If they're limited to lead and steel, you know, they'd be stuck with whatever they could make from that essentially. And that would, that would have been it. And, you know, they still had copper jackets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you wouldn't have all of the ballistic tips on rifles, so all of your um, long range stuff would be st still be FMJs. Yeah. Hey, uh, single shot. What's kind of your take on all this? This little discussion that we're having. Would you be happy with the selection if it was limited to 1945 and before? For like, you could buy modern guns, but they'd only be chambered in old ammo. What do you think? Even so, if you were even if you're a hand loader, you still be limited to the technology that was available at that time. To, to reload hand load. What do you think, single shot? What's yeah, your take on it? I, th I think it would. Uh, I think it would uh, further the research on a lot of these rounds, calibers that we have now. I mean, uh, back then rather, to uh, improve them. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of uh, research done on those calibers back then, but the. Uh, the uh, limitation of the style of powder and the type of powder and stuff like that hadn't really been played with, I don't believe, a whole lot. And uh, there was a lot of calibers that was developed that just never, never really caught interest to the military. Mm -hmm. uh, several of them, but uh, that, that you know, that's, that's just to say after that caliber fell on its face that uh, somebody could have picked that up and done a little bit more testing with it. Well, yeah. Uh, what, what would have been resurrected from yeah. pre world war two? I mean, like, like the, like two seventy Roberts, mm -hmm. and, uh, unless you know the M one development, you're not going to know that. Would, would right. that, would that be a thing? Would, would that be what, you know, small arms is would you know a six five six five by fifty five be more of a thing? Um, Here's the no. thing: was, I guess a lot of it would depend on what would have been available in those calibers that are no longer with us anymore. Was that a caliber that was popular for a long time and then just kind of disappeared at the end of World War Two, or was it just kind of yeah. a like a wildcat, or was it just kind of a, a sort of popular caliber that never really took off? It kind well, of depends on what the availability yeah. would have been like back then to decide if that caliber would have kept its popularity into modern times. Well, well, well no. kind of like how the 300 blackout, that was a wildcat. And then so people are like, okay, we're going to run with this and make it uh, standard. So even a wildcat back then, if it was there, there's nothing saying, oh, we're going to make this a standard. And then boom, everything starts going from that. Like yeah. it was there. A, the, the, yeah. There's a rifle that was a, uh, had a short action. I can't remember if it was straight walled or neck case back in like the late uh, World War One era. Mm -hmm. um, was like, and I, I want to say it was a Remington cartridge, like a 41 Remington or something like that. That was, it had a semi auto, uh, it was a semi auto rifle back then, but it was, it was a short action. That that might have been something that got re yeah. resurrected. No. Yeah. Now you got uh, the, Tony, three, the you 358 go autoloader. That cartridge there was uh, in the service back then. Mm -hmm. But the idea of the autoloader in that caliber just didn't uh, seem to work out. That was a good cartridge. But again, would technology evolve to make that round feed properly in that gun and make that gun more reliable? You know, that's the yep. question is, what if, what if all those calibers now, like over 30 or 40 years, they finally worked all the bugs out of them and, you know, marketed them and were able to get them to run the, these types of ammo? What would guns look like today? Yep. Well, now, Tony, Tony said, you know, it's all ahead. the calibers that fell on their face and, you know, once they fall on their face, nobody uh, grabs the uh, 
the uh, caliber and runs with it to see if they can improve it. Mm-hmm. You know, once it's done, it's a done deal on that caliber. Yeah, 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 it's true. But when was the 222 Remington developed? Uh, oh, was, it, was it the 50s or not? I can look it up real quick. I just been hitting Wikipedia for like the invention 60s, dates I of these think. things. No, no, because 223 is derivative off that. So 223 right, right. Remington was 1950 in oh, service. Okay. In service in 50, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was so, a big hit yeah. on the vomitors. Vomitors really like that. My father-in-law had one of the rifles. Yeah. I don't know. And there's so much stuff that was around that at time is forgotten because something either a little bit better or a lot better came to be. So, well, now let's let's kind of talk about the other half of the topic, uh, Foose. Uh, we were talking vehicles, combat vehicles, jets, tanks. Mm-hmm. That stuff had never evolved and never changed. Well, but let's just say cars did. I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine a, a, a life where that would not be the case. But well, let's pretend that mechanical development pretty much ended because it wasn't necessary because we didn't think we'd be fighting wars anymore. If we were still using, you know, aircraft and, and combat vehicles from the 40s. You know, what, what What would that be like today? It would, I don't know. I mean, wars would probably be drawn out a lot longer than they are now just because of the, the technology that we have. No, there'd be no drones. There'd be no... I think, I, I, yeah. I think a lot of wars would not even happen without the military technology that we have right now. Think about this. Afghanistan. Would we be able... Would we go over there without being able to drop helicopters in there and get get mass amount of people through other countries to there well we'd still have we still have transport planes and paratroopers and you know yes but without the without being able to supply them for that long would we even go there well ozzy ozzy orsborne answered it for us you can't beat the jeep you know (laughs) um but you're talking about support vehicles you know we're talking about support firepower no no um no A-10 Warthog, you know? Right. So since World War II ended, the two greatest pieces of military technology that have been out there have been communications and medicine. Mm-hmm. Our ability to, yep. to save lives of, of our, our wounded service people or to keep them healthy while they're over in, in some of these crappy places and our ability to share information, communicate, uh, you know, uh, reconnaissance, that sort of thing. That is, that has gone further for our military than caliber or capacity or how much cool crap you hang off of an aircraft. It's just like a cop. Everybody yeah. thinks the cop's greatest tool is his sidearm and it isn't, it's his radio. Without mm-hmm. that radio, he can radio. carry three guns. It ain't gonna, no. He, without that radio, he's nothing. So yep. there, it, it depends on how you look at it. If you look at it with the whole Hollywood, blah blah blah. But uh, you know, being able to being able to talk to other people on the battlefield and being able to 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 know that if you get wounded, there's a good chance they can get you out and get you back home alive. You might be in pieces, but you're alive. It's going to go a lot further for combat effectiveness than we're just going to go out here and die and nobody's even going to know. Uh, you know, so you, they can complain about the weight of the weapons or the rate of fire or things like that, but the, the weapons would still be effective. The tactics would have to evolve, but, you know, we're just talking about technology. In some cases, not necessarily between 45 and 50, but between 50 and 70, some of the jets back then, better than the jets we have today, but they didn't have modern radar. They didn't have modern ordnance. Literally, if you hung, if you hung Sidewinder missiles on an F-106, I'll put it up against an F-22. No kidding, you know. And and some of you, oh no, they're reading specifications. They're not talking to the air crews. They're not talking to the maintenance people. They're not talking to the people right. that actually make this stuff work. Okay, you can look at specs all day long. Person who's never served a day in the military, specs don't mean crap. Believe me. Before I joined, yeah, sure. I was into reading these books and oh man, it can fly this fast and carry this much and do all these. And then you get there and find out that's none of that matters or that's not even true. 
So if if you know what you're doing, it's kind of like uh, you know the, the whole Top Gun thing. It's not the plane; it's the pilot. It really is the pilot to some extent. But Chuck Yeager even said it. He could um, he could uh, be wearing bifocals in an F-15 and defeat somebody in a P-51 because he can see him from so far away with the radar and shoot him down before the guy in the P-51. But if they're going, you know, uh, nose to nose and uh, that sort of thing. Sure, the F-15 is still going to have speed and, and some other things on it, but if that, that guy in that P-51 knows how to use the plane, he might be able to, to, to get away or, you know, I mean, I'm just saying that there's there's a lot more to it than just specs on, on the you know, so on that, website. Uh, a while you back, know. there was a YouTube video or an article or something like that that basically gave modern soldiers they let them go through a drill with the air, with their current ARs and stuff like that, and they gave them M1 grains and M1 carbines, and they said that they're like eighty five to ninety percent effective. Um, like the capabilities only dropped off, you know, ten to fifteen percent. So, if well, having if they had modern communications and satellite imaging and radar and everything and drone support, you know, well, I mean, they, they, they didn't have they didn't have all of that. It was just your small, I think maybe, um, not even platoon, means smaller than that, maybe. Like a unit uh, or something? Or a yeah, small or a fire team. And, a fire yeah, team. It, it could have been a fire team, you know, hey, this is what you have. Go and assault this position. Like, the technology and everything, like the communications, all the knowledge was still there. But just giving them, you know, World War II weapons, they said it was like, it was only like a... 10 to 15 percent uh decrease so, in capabilities so combined let's just pretend that we had the r d and the, the the satellites and communications and everything but we were still using the old guns we'd be almost as effective as we are now mm -hmm. and we're spending billions of dollars on all this new gun technology you know yeah we probably yeah. wouldn't we wouldn't see much of an increase in combat effectiveness because you know if you look at the uh the war in Afghanistan, they went back to manufacturing the old M72 laws. It's uh, the newer version of it, but they literally just did what all these manufacturers said they can't do. We can't just take one and copy it and make it all over again. They were making these in and using them because they were less expensive than an AT4, and they did pretty much the same job. I'm not saying they're as good as an AT4 against an armored plat or uh, armored target, but they were using them against bunkers or uh, to, to you know, anti-personnel kind of that thing, which just because it says it's an anti-tank weapon doesn't mean you can't use it against something else. All right. And you're going, why don't we That's use this right. Viet old, why don't right. we use this old Vietnam stuff that costs less to make and it's lighter, it's smaller, and it does what they need. We don't need this so, big, bulky, imported. The other thing is, uh, as far as I know, special operations uh, dusted off some recoilless rifles from the armory, and there is yep. still stuff in warehouses and boxes and armories all over, and we're, went back to using those because they needed something like that, and it was effective for the mission. So there are times where the old becomes the new again, or be, for some special reason, they're able to, to use something. Uh, it's it's just a matter of how you employ it. So oh, if they oh. stopped with some of this technology in 1945, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't still be effective today. It just means we might have to adjust our tactics, or some of you guys might actually have to have a little bit more strength to you know carry these heavy guns. <laughs> well, 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 now the new six spear rifles are going to be lugging you know M1 Grand weight weapons around with them. So yeah, so some things you also have to. Crap, I forgot what I was gonna say. Um I forgot. Think about that for a sec. Hillbilly with another microphone com drop comment of the day. We're not talking about what we would miss the most, a microwave. <laughs> oh man, that would suck. No yeah. hot pockets, back no microwave in, uh, hot spot. No. Go ahead. Back in those days where uh, communications was a major situation, uh a lot of the older uh, types of communications were being monitored and uh, captured by the enemy so we had to go to different uh, types of communications ham radio was the major benefactor for that because each one of those types of communications was tested mm -hmm. and if they if they wanted to transmit coordinates to a, a on the ground tank or an aircraft whatever the case may be 
they used what they call a packet. And it, it, the transmission only lasted a few seconds, but it was either encrypted or scrambled or both so that somebody receiving that signal all they'd hear was a bunch of noise. But the other person on the other end that was authorized to receive that communications received it and uh, translated it over and then acted from that point. Teletype yeah. was one of those types of, in, uh, of uh, communications. Hell, even Morse code was still being used back then. Still being used today. Not as much, but there are definitely... Uh, you, you'd have uh, some more... radio operators out there that that's all they use is uh, Morse code. Well, well, uh, What's that? So, going back to that, uh, the Navajo code talker code talkers yep. with um wind with talkers japan yeah wind talkers and in the pacific theater you might you might have more of that yep um yeah i still can't think where i was say hey, tommy gun says using mosins in ukraine i mean yeah we were fighting we were fighting in afghanistan against opponents that were rocking their mosins i mean that's yeah the mosin the guns would still would have been an effective battle rifle you know, I mean, hey, all you need is minute. All you need is minute of man accuracy at three or four hundred yards. You know, I mean, that's what they do. You know, and I'm not saying newer technology is not necessarily better, but there are some things about the older technologies if it's used in a certain way where it can be almost as effective, just as effective, or more effective depending on the application. Somebody, yeah. you know, would say, "Oh, so you like old guns, but you don't like old cars." Well. At today's fuel prices and the fact that they don't have leaded gas anymore, uh, how are you going to make that old car run, right? So it's the same thing. If they stop making the yeah. ammo, if nobody's making the ammo, how are you going to make that old gun run? Or if you can't get parts for it, how are you going to make that? Old? But then again, we got new technology now. We can 3D print metal parts, right? So we can make parts for the guns. And and I remember what I was going to say. So, um, you know, about the old technology and, you know, going from going back to uh, Vietnam era, um shoulder rocket fired, you know, anti-tank missiles and stuff like that. Think of any skill out there. If you just start it, um, you get very proficient very fast. And But to go from proficient to expert or expert to godlike status, the amount of training and the amount of expense to start gaining those few incremental half percents to a percent gets almost you know to infinity i mean it, it gets exponential but just getting something that works is relatively cheap and easy same with that whenever it comes to you know military firearms or military um technology aircraft you know going from you know the 70s era um aircraft to an f 15 or f14 or f15 or f22 whatever it may be five percent better but all of the, the expense to get that five percent is so much more goes back to the um our small arms it may be two percent better but to get there is so much more expensive uh than going you know an m1 or something like that you know and so I see the spending billions, and billions, and billions of dollars to get two percent better. It's still, you know, on the battlefield that two percent is is everything, so it's worth it. But for us, like, it's only two percent, you know. Mm, the two percent so. isn't everything on the battlefield, Foos. It isn't. So the F-22s, everybody was so geeked about these new F-22s. They cost a fortune. They had all kinds of issues developing them. And then what they end up doing, they, they filled two squadrons, I think, and then stopped. And they said, we're looking at this, and for the mission we do, and for the enemies we have out there, we're the world superpower. The F-16, with modern avionics and modern ordnance, and do the job for a fraction of the cost. We don't have to retrain anybody. Yeah. We don't have to get any new uh, equipment to maintain the these aircraft or whatever. So let's just stop buying because they were going to replace all the F-16s with F-22s. And they're like, why? Why? So when somebody in the future is a bad enough enemy that we're going, crap, we can't, these F-16s are junk. Or when the mission changes where something the F-22 does that the F-16 doesn't mm -hmm. is, is you've, 
absolutely can't get by without it, right? Then it's worth the money, but it, it isn't. So, but, you know, that, that 2% doesn't make a hill of beans on the battlefield. Right, right, right. Uh, unless you need that 2% because there are, there are some missions out there that F-16 can't do because you need stealth, you need this, you need that, that, that is only in the F-22 or maybe F, you know, F-110 that's no longer in service. But um, like with that, that F-22, it's like, okay, um, that could be that extra 2% or the capabilities in that, that did cost an arm and a leg and your, you know, father, mother, and two kids mm-hmm. and, you know, wife's parents, you know, that, that may be worth it. But anyway, um, you know, to get that extra 2% with all that expense, there are mission capabilities that the F-22 or that, that unique firearm or, uh, weapon system may have that is very valuable and is yeah. worth it for a small sliver um, of of that capability. Just aren't, like, aren't know, they? Isn't the new jet going to be just another variant of the F fifteen Eagle, the F fifteen C, or something? Aren't they going to make a new F fifteen? That's kind of what we're working on to replace the F twenty twos, or to not kind of kind of kind of put the F twenty twos off to the side, and our sure. new combat uh, jet's going to be a variant of the F fifteen Eagle. Uh, I, I think it's, I thought it was off the Hornet. Okay. I'm not sure what it was. I, 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 I can't remember what yeah, yeah. brand coming off of, but yeah, it, they're, they're going to an older design with they're they're adding thrust vectoring and adding some stuff that they learned from the F-22 and mm. F-35. Um, Wood says that the F-22s are necessary to shoot down balloons though. <laughs> yeah. Now the reason the reason why we use the Sidewinder rocket is because if we had just used the gun, I think they had said that a couple Canadian jets mm-hmm. shot down a balloon like twenty years ago and it took a yeah, thousand but... rounds to drop a weather balloon. So and what it do still you do? went into Russian territory. Yeah. So we 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 you know yeah it took us a half million dollar Sidewinder to drop it, but it was the fastest easiest way to get it down essentially because it's uh, not like a balloon. It's not gonna, it's not going to pop like a latex balloon. You can just keep putting pinholes in it all day long, wasting all that ammo. Yeah, but so. I mean, they, 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 they probably could have taken something else with, you know, a, a dumb rocket for that, gotten close. and Yeah. And but that's not the American way. We blow shit up. And that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we operate, boys. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Think, think that's about, how daddy did it. That's how grandpa did it. That's how America does it. You know? Think about <laughs> shooting an animal with a small, fast bullet. It's mm-hmm. going to put a tiny hole in them and fly through them so fast that it's going to be in the next county before it hits the ground. It's going, and then the animal runs away. Maybe it bleeds. Yeah. Maybe it dies later. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you graze it and it really doesn't do much more than a flesh wound. That's what they did by using that sidewinder. And don't believe that BS. No, they they, they could have taken it out with the with the twenty mic mic, but whatever. Yeah. 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 And and what like this? What why? Like if they knew the capabilities of the first one, the second balloon, what? Why go after the delivery system? Go after the payload. Like they could have put a couple rounds and hit the payload. Because it would have kept drifting. It would have just. It would have gone yeah. for miles. It wouldn't have dropped quick enough before, and we'd have to go fetch it out of the middle of the ocean. You know. So I don't know. Like I Which said, a couple of Canadian about? jets what? tried dropping a weather balloon with the guns, and it took a thousand rounds, and we just didn't want to have to go no. do that again. So we have you ever seen a Canadian guy though. shoot? They can't hit the broadside of a barn. They were using American jets. They were using F-15 Eagles. And, it, I mean, they, they would have been trained by us. They have a few of them in their in their Air Force. Canada's never had one F-15 in their inventory. This is what I mean. Don't they, don't they lease them from us? Nope. I thought they did. I thought they had a couple. No, or we, we keep them there. Then we nope. share some area. Okay. No, sir. Right. No, but what 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 was uh, this Canadian whatever aircraft had the same version, or a, a sorry, not the same version, but a a rotary cannon that shot twenty mic mic, and the same as the F twenty two, and they did they spent over a thousand rounds to punch this balloon. Hmm. Um, that's why I say go after the payload. Let the balloon because right now, I mean, the balloons over that they, they, they already said that the balloons aren't going to be, you know, the ones up north aren't going to be uh, found because they're over such a wide area and remote area. Go after the payload and let the freaking thing fly. 
So good, I'm just responding back to your comment out there. Yeah, the Israelis, the Saudis, the Japanese have F-15s. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. The Canadians would have had Hornets. But the point is that they tried dropping it with the cannons and it didn't work. But you're right. Maybe they missed with half their shots. Maybe they're just sitting there strafing back and forth and, like, landing 20% or whatnot. They, it doesn't they, matter they, at this point. It'll be interesting to see what we do in the future now when we have more of them flying over. Are we going to use their guns or are we going to use missiles to drop them? You know. The Canadians use American equipment. They they tried starting up their own military aviation industry after World War II. And between internal politics and just uh, uh, being behind uh, as far as everybody else that had already been developing military jets, it just wasn't working out. So, and, they, and they said, it's just less expensive for us to just buy American equipment. We're allies, blah, 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 blah. So they yeah. have used our stuff. We don't we don't base anything over there. They don't base any of their stuff over here, but we do train together and we you know we we also do missions together, that sort of thing. And yeah. that that goes right back to some of the stuff you guys are talking about. If the technology stopped, would there be a handful of nations supplying arms to the rest of the world? Or because it stopped, would everybody and their brother develop their own battle rifle and now suddenly you don't have nations that are all carrying the same thing? I think so. I think that's what would have happened. Militaries would have developed their own using that technology because each country could have a unique way uh, or a unique capability just for that country that they feel is the best. Yeah. Patriot there was a lot of reverse is, uh, engineering back then, too. Yeah. Patriot in the Dark says the Canadians actually didn't shoot at it. They just asked it very politely to come down, pre please, pretty please. And they offered sprinkle donuts <laughs> from Timmy Hortons. That sounds so that's, right. That's, what they brought them. that's it right there. Could, could you see well, Biker Bob on top of his right. camper with a 22 long rifle going with a, with a Labatt going, come on in. You know? <laughs> I learned something on, I learned something on uh, my balloon video about helium balloons. Uh, you shoot them, they don't pop, and they don't come down right away. I was totally surprised. Probably use like a heavy like canvas or something like a thick material that well, you know, it it's not going to explode yeah. like latex. Well, well, yeah, well, the well, air stays on well, like the other side of it, and so it takes a while for it to start leaking out. Right, fall. correct. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, everyone thinks, oh, you pop a balloon like a balloon, but the uh, the thing is, is a lot of these weather balloons, the it's not stretched like a latex balloon is. So you put a punch a hole in it, it's just like punching a hole through a t-shirt. It's not, not the t-shirt's not going yeah. to totally rip and you know become nothing because there's no tension. I mean, there's tension from the air, but there's not tension from the um, the web the the round penetrating it to, to cause right. some kind of major damage. So. Right. So the only way to really do it is to basically cut off the very tip top of it, so the dra the weight of it would pull everything down and get all the gas out the top. Yeah. They should have yeah. used an they should have used an air two genie. That would have done it. Yeah. That is a that is a rocket with a nuclear warhead. You shoot it into a formation of Soviet bombers. It detonates it it it, it detects that that it's within the formation. It detonates and the nuclear blast just takes out like 12 airplanes at once. That's what they should have done. But they retired those because of didn't they blow it up over Lake Huron? You want that kind of followed over your head there, Squid? They actually blew up a genie rocket over oh. over a test site uh, out west, and they had uh, some people stand underneath the blast, and they oh were God. fine. They were fine for about thirty or forty years, and they died of cancer. Oh, but yeah, still, yeah. it's yeah. it's about national defense. But, 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 but I am a very strong proponent of nuclear weapons. But, we but, but but that was a really good thirty or forty years that, that they had. Um, M. Gabriel says that on the other hand, the kinetic part of the next superpower war will be in space, so new weapons need to be de developed for that. That's a pretty good point. Well, too. So, so space force. Like, all yeah. these kinetic weapons, like oh, we're going to have, you know, space weapons, all this stuff. We could already launch a missile and it be anywhere in the U.S. within an hour. Oh, yeah. So what, like, all this st stuff from space? Why have all the expense of doing that? Whenever we have the capability already, land based or ocean based and subs. Because Good point. Space. Yeah, there you go. Uh, guarantee because those we can, have, damn it. Yeah, exactly. Defense has says, uh, guarantee those balloons have some high tech type of fix a flat. 
so they and, didn't have yeah. to use it more. <laughs> yeah, and actually the self-selling, you know, uh, nylon, nylon or something, rubber, you know. Actually, yeah, it's been around yeah. since thing. before World War II, so yeah. Yep, yep, yep. yep. But I'm Defense telling you, man, uh, yeah. it, okay, the 20 millimeter rounds aren't good, even if they used high explosive uh, incendiary or something like that. Well, if they used incendiary rounds, that, okay, that worked. So here's low tech versus high tech. The, World the, War the, One, they've got those yeah. balloons, they've got the observation balloons, and they were flying biplanes around them and shooting at them with 19th century single shot black powder cartridge rifles oh with, special, <laughs> with special incendiary bullets, no BF in these cartridges. Yep. And we're setting these balloons on fire. Now, I realize that helium's not flammable, but I'm wondering if the incendiary round would do anything to the membrane of the, the, the balloon there, if that would burn it. But still, enough oxygen at that altitude for, yeah, flame, for enough, fire to burn. Okay, a 20 millimeter is a one-inch diameter hole. You punch enough one-inch diameter holes in that balloon, it's going to slowly lose buoyancy and sink. But you, you know, they should have had other support aircraft in the area there tracking it with radar or visually just flying around it, right, and waiting to see where it landed. The defense dad said they should have released the sharks with laser beams into the lake and let them shoot it down. It would have cost Freaking one laser. million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Couldn't they send so, up so, like a black hawk with a tarpoon no, and a rope, you know, and no, shoot what, it what, and just drag it? Star Wars? Down. Star Wars like with a snow speeder, just hit it with an arrow and drag it back, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. This, 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 is what, this is what they Red should have done. By and do like a couple loops on his last of that be and just bring it back. What, just what, 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 those, can we just guys guy Hey guys, yeah. guys, I, I have the yeah. solution here. They yeah. should have hired Maverick in his uh, P fifty one, slapped some uh, World War II dumb rockets on it, and have him go within a couple hundred yards and just let loose and pull up and be done. <laughs> well, how about those guys that dive with those pair, those uh, suits where they can fly or whatever? <laughs> they can land on top rocket of packs. it and rip a hole down the side with a knife. I mean. I mean, we could have we could have done so much more. Just hook it up to like a Zebco fishing pole and just yeah, drive it back just, home, you know. Just to, just oh, fly an A oh. fly an A one thirty up there. Get an A one thirty up there. Thing, and just, tear that thing apart. Have, just have somebody like paratrooper like just land on top of oh, it. Yeah. Just yeah, stable <laughs> it with some duct tape no. with some rope, and then jump off, and then just reel it in. Dude, no, you know, no, we could have hooked it up to a winch on a jeep and just brought it in. You know, think about this. Get get puff the magic dragon up there. Uh -huh. with the five millimeter artillery shell have that thing bank and hit it with a 105 millimeter artillery shell i think that'll yeah. yep. just defense dad just send hillbilly up there in his ultralight and uses black and decker tree saw problem solved <laughs> <That would work. laughs> drag down the side of it with a uh a, a sawzall it's, you know I we could have take this. two batteries with at me, that but... altitude we could easily just had a you know so we could have just landed on it like with something and then just jump off when we're done i mean just like a video game or something it, yeah i think yeah, i did that in call of duty a couple times so. j j just have a parachute and you're good yeah have a halo team come in there high altitude you know whatever just have those guys just land yeah. on it like whatever there's a lot we could do instead of having to waste six hundred thousand dollars on a rocket we could have just yeah. uh, again a fishing pole and just enough lure or anything's possible right that's redneck way but but, 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 but you possible. know but, yeah. but you know, so, someone wanted to get a medal for ha coming up with the idea of launching a six hundred thousand dollar aim missile for they, a twenty dollar balloon. They said the guy wanted. They said they're going to put a special balloon stencil on his jet for shooting yeah. it down. Yeah. yeah. You know what would be? You know the the thing is, we're going to end up finding out that these balloons are a new Amazon delivery system. Oh and my god! Just off people to get the packages. <laughs> So that's where my flip up sites are. They ended up in, in Michigan somewhere in somebody's backyard. <laughs> I, I, uh, that's, what, that's why I keep I, losing Amazon I mean, packages because uh, the government keeps shooting them down, you know? Yeah. A lot of uh, Amazon China stuff actually, does come from China. So, yeah. It is, Wish.com it's, 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 packages that they're dropping, you know, with little parachutes, you know, they're, they're trying to get it over here faster than the six months it takes to get something from Wish.com. So if they launch a balloon with a bunch of parcels, they can be over here like in seven days. So that's, that's how they do <laughs> right. it, you know, AliExpress and Wish.com. So. China yeah. actually released a, a uh, press headline that said that it was a, a school project. Oh my God! Get out of yeah, here! They did. They come get out, out of here! Oh, Always got to make it a children thing. Okay. Always got to make so, it a kids so, thing. Yeah, <laughs> school yeah a, a school. So the what one that, school, that, 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 Mao, that, school of happy communism. I mean, what? <laughs> well, I mean that, that's kind of everywhere. But but the uh, the one that, that that they shot down in the Atlantic. Yeah. They said that the payload was about the size of a seven four. No, I mean not seven forty seven, but like a DC school 10. bus or something. Oh, yeah, like God. it was it was massive payload. 
So it's yeah, it's and not, so that that not, school project is went over all of our ICBM locations. Just happened to go over where all of our top secret bases are. Did you see the path? It went yeah. across <laughs> all of our silos, including Nebraska. Oh, Just you're talking about those Air Force Base and go through yeah. Kansas and go over. It went came through Colorado and went through Wyoming and went right over the central part of Nebraska down through Kansas. Oh, if I would have seen it going overhead, who knows what I would have done to it. So. <laughs> Anywho, guys. Yep, yep. Wood I, says it best. Wood yeah. says it best. Out there with your children. Think of the children. So you, you, you would have been out there with your Ruger Ranch, Travis. <laughs> look at, look at, look at. Yeah, exactly. Defense said I could have had my camera delivered by spy balloon this morning instead of driving to the coffee shop. So sorry, we had to go play around with our F twenty two. You know, we have to show that it's capable. So we have to have at least one combat kill to justify its you know five hundred trillion dollar. Had they used an F sixteen so. with a twenty millimeter cannon, they could have done it for less money. But an A ten, just dust off shoot, an A ten. Well, that's the other thing. I don't know why they didn't send an A unless this thing was at uh, was really 50, high altitude, 50,000 feet or something. It, it was, it was all right, almost, you're, you're, you're probably exceeding the service ceiling of an A ten then, because A tens are right here. They're right on Lake, yeah, yeah. just south of Lake yeah. Huron. So to fly F twenty twos all the way up from Virginia, you know, I mean, I mean, but uh, but but. but it, like yeah, maybe yeah, empty the gas tank before winter. Otherwise, we got to put stable on the jet, let it sit the whole winter time. So, <laughs> but, you know, we had to go get it. A... <laughs> hold on, yeah. So yeah. let's say this was at sixty thousand feet, and the A ten service ceiling is fifty thousand. Let's just say those numbers. Can we shoot up two miles with the cannon? <laughs> well, no, no, not that. You have an you know another rocket on the A ten that is cheaper, most likely. And send that. I mean, it's not going to work. Uh, it, it, the the rocket's not going to not at, not at ten thousand feet. Plus, okay. also at that altitude, you've got to look at how your your angle yeah, that yeah. you're you're shooting at it with, because you don't want this stuff to travel, you know, fifty miles that way and land in some land on top Canadian of a town, yeah, Meyer so. grocery store in some suburb yeah. of you know Grand don't, Rapids, you know. Don't, don't worry, <laughs> there's no Canadians up there. Just let them let, let depleted uranium fall where it falls. So there's one thing I do know, though, guys. If weapons had evolved, there's a possibility that this never would have been made. The greatest gun stand of all time, the RNLDisplays.com weapon stand. So I mean, imagine what well, this would look like today if we didn't have the modern firearms that we do have. But you can get your the own AK. stand. Well, you have the AK, but uh, you can go over to RNLDisplays.com and if you use discount code TravisB11. You will get 10% off plus an additional 5% more because I love all of you for a total of 15% off your own stand. So go to rnldisplays.com and get that stand and enjoy and appreciate the modern firearms that we do have access to. And yes, yes, people, they are Glock compatible. So instead of, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't have Glocks. Well, mm -hmm. you would, but uh, instead of that being an AR 15, that'd be a um, uh, M1 carbine. Yeah, it would have been, or it would have been a, a 30 AR. No, because we wouldn't have the ammo. So yeah, it would have been an M1 carbine stand. So. Those might be I'm a one carbine compatible. I don't know. Rob would have make those out of steel to hold the Mosin and stuff instead of wood. Yeah, we're going to have to have them forged, CNC machined. You know, that'll yeah. actually hold up a, a Savvy C308. It'll hold up a, like a G3 style rifle because I've sat mine on it. It just happens to sit. It's it's heavy. It's like, eh, but it works because it's American craftsmanship. Good job, Outcast. You did you did as well. Travis is the man. No, Outcast, you're the man. You're the man. I'm just going to get that out there right now. So. All right, guys, we're going to go and wrap this one up. We're just kind of going down the rabbit hole of just what ifs at this point. It's been a fun discussion. It's been a fun to see. Like, where would we be if we had just stopped with ammo R&D back in World War II? I think it would be a cooler selection of guns than what we have right now because I want modern firearms chambered in all these antique calibers or all these old school calibers, which – I would be surprised again, like I said, next year at SHOT Show. I really think the market's going to go in the direction of the repro the historic recreation or reproduction rifle and gun area. Because, you know, we kind of have that that kind of that that uh, renaissance of the uh, the Browning high power. We've got PSA putting those, you know, uh, what, SCG-44s yeah. into production. Are they SCG-44s? Is that right? In, yeah. Back into production? Yeah. It, it, it's going to yeah. be old variations, but simplified manufacturing. Yeah. They're going to look, they're going to look at, you know, reproductions are going to look like the authentic, you know, guns, obviously not going to be full auto for the majority of us. And so I really think that's the way they're going to go because it's a marketing thing. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll see a resurgence of a uh, 30 AR this year. That's the original 30 super carry 30 AR, the original 30 super carry. So that's right. Yep. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this one up here. So we're going to close it on out. Uh, so uh, not squib, AKA Foos. anything you want to say before we go, brother? uh no all right all right 
Okay, uh, First single thing. shot. Oh, go ahead, Squid. <laughs> uh, take care, fellas. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. It's a good conversation. Yeah, it's been and, fun. Uh, it's been fun. Just kind of out there a little bit. Just kind of a what if. But like I said, those those what if <laughs> comic books made by Marvel back in the day were always kind of my favorites. You know, what if Iron Man was a bad guy? What if Captain America was was working for the Russians? You know, that kind of thing. So what ifs were always kind of a fun series. So this is a fun little what if discussion. We don't ever host anything like this before. I think it's kind of a fun. That's time. right. Now, That's everybody, right. take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. God bless. America moves by truck. You know it, you know it. All right, Hillbilly up. American Hillbilly, anything you want to say before we go? Anything fun coming up on the channel, man? What do you got coming up these days? <laughs> yeah, we, we got some great videos. First, I just want to tell you thanks for having me. Great panel and side chat. I really enjoyed it today. Um, we are having a big giveaway tonight on my live. Um, Woo! Yeah, yeah. We're doing a 500 sub giveaway. And... While we're on the live, um, I'm just going to be go ahead and do our free monthly giveaway, and then I'm going to be giving away uh, stuff on the live. So it's going to be a fun party. We'll just have a lot of fun. Um, the I did release a video yesterday. Um, if you want to enter in the 500 sub giveaway, there you can go and get entered in it. So by tonight, awesome. we'd be too late to enter that. So okay, but you'll be able to enter in other giveaways tonight, but. Anyway, it's at nine central, and so I hope everybody can make it. Is Thank you for calling time? off the best time zone in the world. I appreciate that because that's where the people that can read and write in this country understand that time zone. So <laughs> very well, very well said, my my <laughs> Missourian, my Missourian brethren. <laughs> Five hundred subs, man! Congratulations on that. You and Christmas seven forty, your channels are starting to take off, man. That's always good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. I I enjoy it. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Great community of people, you know. All right. Cool, cool. So make sure you guys go over there and subscribe to Hillbilly Up, the American Hillbilly, and you guys will enjoy the content that you find over there. It's a lot of fun. And uh, he makes wonderful dips out of modern firearms like guacamole. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch that video. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. All right. And, uh, okay, thanks for doing that. Thanks for joining in. And hopefully we'll have you back here next week. So, all right. And uh, and then last but not least, right, we got Squibload from the green room, right, the John Deere green room. Um, uh, anything you want to say before we go? I love that background. It's simple. It's to the point. It just, it's, it's a delicious selection of wonderful battle rifles behind you that you have going on there. A lot of people are jealous. Um, anything you want to say before we go? It's, no. <laughs> All right, man. So by the way, Squib is going to be, you know, hopefully just kind of stay tuned, get over there, subscribe because he's going to be, uh, hopefully getting some more live streams out there and, having a good time and wonderful channel. Lots of great content. Never know what you're going to find. It truly is the uh, Russell Stover's box of chocolates of the YouTube channels because you never know what you're going to get when you go over there. I'm pretty predictable, That's but right. this guy offers a <laughs> wonderful cornucopia of content. So there you go. <laughs> oh, man, I'm just throwing the metaphors out there. A bouquet of fantastic, wonderful smells can be found over on Squibb's channel. So there you go. Uh, I'm just leaving him speechless. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. We're just having fun. Uh, episode number 270. What if caliber and ammo research and development ended with World War II? What is the future of ammo? Where would we be? Well, there would have been a future of ammo because we would have been stuck with the, uh, the ammo of our grandparents, but uh, not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see everybody out there. Let's give a little shout out on the YouTube side. We had... Christmas 740, he said Squibb's video that he put out yesterday is a must watch. So there you go. You got you get props from the Christmas 740 out there, you Midwestern people helping each other out. So Squib, what was yesterday's video? What was it? Oh, it was your shot show. You're not shot not show 2020 shot video. Show. Yeah, you know, these guys they flew out there, they drove out there, they went to all the stuff, and you know, that that's their thing. That's fine. I went out there to do something different. Uh so it the video is long. So for those people that lose interest after about three seconds because they don't understand words with more than one syllable, it's probably not for you. <laughs> and it's got nothing but old guns in it. So if you don't even know how to use a bolt action rifle, it's probably well, not for you. Squid, if, you're a trailblazer if, because if flintlocks scare you. Yeah, yeah, it's not for you. So don't bother. But if you like all that old crap or you're sick of watching the same old shot show videos every year, then yeah, you might like it. <laughs> So, so, so I, I watch all you guys, man. I love all you guys. I watch everyone. I, you guys are my entertainment since I don't subscribe to any other networks or anything like that. Go ahead. So, uh, so basically, yeah. Squibb's video 
I ha- I haven't seen it, but it's what if military technology would have ended in eighteen ten? Maybe, maybe we'd all be running around with balls and muskets and uh, blunder buses. I'd be concealed. <laughs> I'm running around carrying, with balls anyway. carry a blunder bus. I- I'm running around with balls anyway. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Uh, New York Outcast <laughs> says, I fell asleep after the four Henry. What's the four Henry? What's, what's I did a about? count of how many original Henry rifles we yeah. walked past during the show. And uh, little captions on the bottom. I actually, I- eventually I want to get the software you use, Travis. I, I, one day when I have better software, I mean, I'm working on a better computer right now. But when I have better software, I'll do things like have a little, have it, you know, ding. and every, I mean, I probably could have laid over that, that over the voiceover. Mm-hmm. Every time I did a, the number, you know, we're on Henry number of this oh, yeah. or something. But yeah. I was like, all right, I'm already putting enough time into this. I got a chance to listen to you because I had school and then I got a club I sponsor after school and then I had dinner and then I had to come home and jump on the Xbox. So I'll be you, listening to your podcast today. Um, I'm not doing a your podcast. Po- not your podcast, your, your, video, your video. And you can yeah. listen to it because I did narration for some of the, the pictures and cool. I got a lot of good pointers from Patriot in the Dark on how to do a narration for somebody who – is visually or is impaired, driving, right? Or is visually impaired. I mean, or both is of them. Right, and that's it. It's great I to have because I listen to long form videos. I love the longer the, the the video, the better. And so, if somebody's talking, describing, it works better for me because that's my entertainment in my car at yes. home. You know, so so as somebody who listens in their car or listens at work, I try to do it from both of those standpoints. I mean, practice what I preach, right? So I appreciate Patriot giving me the pointers on that because I've tried to uh, use that in other videos. So you don't even have to watch it. If you watch it, you'll see the pictures, but I mean, if you know what the gun looks like, then really you're just going to hear a lot about how much money it is. And the main reason I put the prices of the guns in there wasn't uh, for any reason other than to just piss off New York Outcast because, you know, (laughs) (laughs) you don't you got to You got to You got to shoot it to know it, man. You got to shoot it to know it. It's just like all these all these vintage cars. You're like, how could you spend three hundred thousand dollars on a Hemi Cuda? Have you seen one in person? Have you driven one? You might shut up when you do. You're like, oh, this is so worth the money. You know, that's all I'm saying. So um, New York Outcast is um, doubling down on Squib. Squib should do another podcast tonight. Oh, uh, you got nothing else going on. You got nothing uh, going on. You I'm know you got the time. Show, uh, but uh, I'm sure somebody's doing a show tonight. All the gun buddies at Squib show were on oxygen. Oh, my God. Wow. Come on, man. Come on. Wow. I'd say something there, but I'm not. You know what? Just for that, I'm taking the banner down. I'm taking the banner down. Boom. RNL this place, <laughs> you're dead to me. No, I'm just kidding. I'll bring you back up there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh crap. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let this one go. It's already going off the rails like an Ohio chemical spill. So we're gonna go and let you guys go. Too soon. We'll talk about why that happened next week, but uh, oh my god, that's terrible. Anyway, hey, man, I live in Nebraska, the middle tornado alley. I've got a fatalistic uh, overview on life. So, you know, uh, if it ain't one thing, it's something else. I'll probably get taken out by a crop duster. Mark my words. So, <laughs> anywho, you guys have fun. Be safe. Let's give a shout out on the YouTube side. We got New York Outcast out there. We got Kevin Jew, Hillbilly Up. I can't believe I said that. Ozzy Orsborn, Chris in the 740, M. Gabriel, Razor JB. My mom's out Come there. Come on, Hi, mom. people. Gun, Thomas Rees. Mom Gee. raised you better. Than the Hi, mom. Fun. Hi, Mom. You raised me well. Um, <laughs> who else is out there? Uh, Hillbilly Ups with us today. Woods is watching. Oh, my God. Defense Dad. Uh, Bjorn was out there. Uh, Freda was also watching today, too. Freda, welcome back. Uh, uh, Woods out there. Oh Patriot in the Dark checking us out. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about it. Uh, Tony York's out there watching today, too. Apparently, I was out there. Gunpowder Beauty checking out the show. Uh, Tommy Gunn joining us from Canada. The whole Squib Empire was out there. The Squib Lift. The, the squib aside, the squib, yeah, everybody squib is out there today, too. Chris in the 740 watching in. The shoot is chilling with us today, too. And I think that's about it. We also had some M. Gabriel Mountain View joining in earlier. Uh, I think we'll call it. So, guys, um, we will see everybody next week. I have no idea what the topic is, but we'll discuss something fun. If you guys ever want to make a suggestion for a topic, you can email me at thecalibercorner@gmail.com. And we, we can discuss it unless it's something we've covered several times. Like we've done, if you ever just type in Caliber Corner and any gun topic you can think of, there's a good chance we've discussed it in one of our 270 episodes that we've done over the last five years. And if not, we can always talk about it. So if you have some ideas, let me know. Two Live Moo, good to see you in there, buddy. All right, and Kevin June. Okay, guys. Um, 
or, or ask for a link, come on and suggest it. And then no, join. It's a possibility. I can always email you guys too. Email me at thecalibercorner at gmail.com. Let me know that you uh, are requesting to join in the show and we'll bring you in if you want to try it. So just uh, keep Man. it, keep a G, keep a G rated for general audiences, not gangsta. That's all I ask. So sorry. All right. That's right. That's right. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have fun. Be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Take care.